Hi, I'm Bucky Ransdell, and today I'm going to talk about using SAS QC software for statistical quality improvement. First, let's get a little background on statistical quality improvement in general. Dr. W. Edwards Deming was an engineer, statistician, and management consultant. He promoted the principles of statistical thinking, that all work occurs in interconnected processes, that variation is present in every process, and that understanding and reducing this variation are the keys to improving your product. Deming was very influential as American business increased its commitment to quality in the 1980s. He was inspired by and built upon the work of Dr. Walter Schuhart. Schuhart was a physicist who was employed at Bell Labs in the 1920s. He knew that reducing variation in a manufacturing process was the key to improving quality. He recognized two distinct categories of variation. Variation due to common causes, which is always present, and variation due to special causes that can be identified and addressed. Schuhart developed a graphical tool called the control chart to distinguish between common cause and special cause variation. Distinguishing between natural variation and variation due to special causes is the basis of statistical process control. Reducing all variation is the ultimate goal, but the first step is to eliminate problems in the process that create unusual variation. After a process is made stable and predictable, you can work to reduce common cause variation. Here's an example from integrated circuit manufacturing. We are interested in the diameter of silicon wafers. Wafers are sampled to create 25 batches of five wafers each. This code uses the Schuhart procedure to create control charts of subgroup means and ranges for the wafer diameters. Batch is the subgroup variable. Each batch is one subgroup in the control chart. The way in which wafers are selected for subgroups is critical. Measurements in a subgroup should be made under conditions that are as close to identical as possible. The goal is for the variation within a subgroup to reflect common cause variation and for the variation between subgroup summary statistics to reflect special cause variation. Here are the resulting charts. The blue shaded areas are bounded by the control limits, which are based on an estimate of the process variable's standard deviation. The center line of a chart indicates the expected value of the subgroup summary statistic. By default, the control limits are three standard deviations above and below the center line. With a stable process, you would expect about 997 out of 1,000 subgroup values to be within the control limits. Therefore, a point on a control chart that is outside the three sigma limits indicates unusual variation that should be investigated. X bar and R charts are two kinds of control charts for continuous measurement data. The Schuhart procedure can produce different kinds of charts for continuous data and for counts of defects or defective items. Here the X bar chart has flagged two instances of unusual variation. The first is a subgroup value above the upper control limit. The second is a pattern of six consecutive subgroup values steadily increasing, which is detected by test three of the Western Electric Rules. Each of the standard tests for special causes has approximately the same probability of occurring as a single point outside the control limits. A control chart tells you whether a process is stable and identifies unusual variation. The Western Electric Rules define additional tests for special causes that you can use. Although control charts were developed for manufacturing applications, they can be applied to finance, healthcare, or any process. It is only after you have determined that a process is stable and predictable that you should evaluate how well it meets its specifications. You can use the capability procedure to do this. You can produce graphs that illustrate the distribution of process measurements and compute capability indices that quantify how well they fit the specification limits. Let's look at an example of capability analysis for circuit boards. The customer's specifications state that the boards must be between 3.45 and 3.55 mils thick. This code produces a histogram of the thickness measurements augmented with two insets. Here is a histogram of the thickness measurements. The value of the capability index CPK is 0 0.47 
which indicates that the process is not very capable. The distribution is centered between the spec limits, but it is too wide. A lot of product is being produced that does not meet customer specifications. After you have investigated problems in a process and determined the causes, how do you prioritize corrective action? The Italian economist Vilfredo Pareto noticed that 80% of the land in Italy was owned by 20% of the population. He was surprised to find that the same ratio held in other countries. It turns out that the Pareto principle, which is also known as the 80-20 rule, applies to many things. After you have discovered the causes of problems in a process, you can use a Pareto chart to show which causes are most prevalent or most expensive, so you can tackle those first. Here is a partial listing of a data set that contains the causes of failures over five days in two industrial cleaning processes. This code produces a simple Pareto chart of failure causes. Here is the simple Pareto chart of all the failure data. The axis scale on the left applies to the bars that show the counts for different causes, and the axis scale on the right applies to the cumulative percent curve. Here you can see that contamination and oxide defects together account for about 80% of the failures. This comparative Pareto chart shows the causes of failure for process A and process B independently and shows separate results for each of the five days. You can see that contamination is the biggest problem for process A, but oxide defects are equally, if not more, of a problem in process B. SASQC provides a comprehensive set of procedures for statistical quality improvement. This table shows the basics, but there are 14 SASQC procedures in all. Although statistical quality improvement techniques originated in manufacturing, they are equally applicable in finance, healthcare, and other areas. Graphs and charts are essential for managers, engineers, and other staff. The SASQC procedures produce a rich variety of graphical displays. I'll quickly show you a few examples. This is a control chart showing different process phases, each with its own control limits. Here, plotting symbols are used to distinguish data that are associated with different values of an explanatory variable. You can also use block legends to identify the different values of an explanatory variable. Here is a control chart with box and whisker plots that show the distribution of data within subgroups. You can produce comparative histograms by specifying a class variable in the capability procedure. A moving average control chart is sensitive to small shifts in the process variable. The rare events procedure produces charts for monitoring rare events. This comparison chart is used to examine whether the process data are appropriate for a rare events control chart. Analysis of means is used to identify treatment means that are significantly different from the overall mean. This is a control chart of principal component scores used in multivariate process monitoring. And here's an example of a graph that is used in reliability analysis. For more information about the SASQC product, please visit support.sas.com statistics. Thank you for your attention.